Okay, I said, let's go to the person who said, I want to be rich. Why you want to be rich? Why you want more money? And how much money you want? He said, 10 million. I said, why 10 million? Why not 1 billion? Why not 1 trillion? Why not 100,000? What drives you that you need 10 million? So imagine if yourself becoming 10 times better, wiser. If you need to go fast, go with the competition mindset. If you want to go far where you want to grow, you go with the competition mindset. I'll be talking about leadership and procurement and the importance of completion rather than competition. But before that, a couple of days before I was thinking what is the best thing is to introduce myself here. Some of you knows me as a director of administrative affairs. Some of you knows me, I think, from LinkedIn. Others knows me from the community of procurement and SIPs. Leave all of this aside. And I think one common thing is we all share that we are human. The reason I'm saying this, as a leader, we are also humans. We need to think that. Human means I do mistakes, we all do mistakes, we all learn, we all need each other. We need each other to support each other. Sometimes we get emotional, sometimes we cry, sometimes we get pissed off. All of this says that either you are a leader or not leader, we all need each other. That's one way of a completion mindset. Why I'm saying this? I need an honest thought from your end with this question. What do you think is important? I'll just stand there so you can scan the... QR code. An honest thought, is completion is important or comp competition is important? And let's have a discussion why we think whatever we choose is really important for us, whether it's a personal life or professional life. Competition is like competition within the organization or in your personal life. Completion, you need each other to complete you in order to bring value, whether it's your professional life or your personal life. An honest answer, guys. I think maybe we need some sort of competition. Good. So, but I need to understand the perception. Yeah, talk about competition. Sometimes it's good to compete. If you want to, Dubai, when they say Russia, I, number two, it means I fail. I want to be number one only. What does it mean? Competition. I want to be always the number one. Good. We complete each other, but we need competition in place. Of course. Completion, again, when we work, especially for the same organization, there is never a competition. It should not. I don't believe in the existence of competition. Unfortunately, it happened even with the same team. They should compete each other. But it depends where. I want to look, I want to look at that country. No, I want to be the best. To be the best, I, mean, I want to compete in everything. Right? Everything. Good inside. Uh, completion is means a relationship. How we can complete? And come back. Relationship. Yes. Correlation. Yes, exactly. Correlation. But Absolutely. in my opinion, since I have the experience in 32 years work, uh, the relation completion is better than competition. Because if you don't have relation, you cannot compete. I'll give an example. I think most of the guys had answered the question is, uh, whenever in management, there's nothing right or wrong, but there is something called more, more value-driven concept. Do we need competition? Yes, we do need. Do we need completion? Yes, do, we do need. I'll give two examples. John Maxwell, in his book, he's saying, if you need to go fast, go with the competition mindset. If you want to go far where you want to grow, you go with the completion mindset. That doesn't mean in, in the organization culture you don't, you don't have competition uh, mindset. You need to have. But completion is more value driven if you are thinking about bringing value in the organization, not only goal oriented. So in his book, he was saying goal oriented people focus on competition, grow oriented people focus on completion. Completion is more important if you would like to drive value. And an example, COVID-19. I think in COVID-19, most of the countries, most of the suppliers and the clients, they connected to each other for one main reason, to survive, I believe. So that was a good example. In, in, in crisis situations, you see people coming together for completing each other. Now, with this concept, we are saying that we need each other to complete each other, and there is more dependency in our relationship when it comes to professional and personal relationship. Let's just Tweak that sentences. And instead of saying, I complete you, you complete me, let's say that I complete myself for you, you complete yourself for me. What that mean? I start pushing myself to be a better version. So imagine if yourself becoming 10 times better, wiser, a good uh, version of yourself, and your subordinates or you're in relationship with anybody in your, your, your life or your family, a better version of themselves. What's the value you are bringing to the organization on your life is much, much more. So we need each other. However, we need to have that self-competition inside ourselves to become a better version. With this concept, leadership and influence 
from my perspective, requires completion mindset more than competition mindset. I have put this picture. Who knows this picture is, is, is about what? The mind and the heart. It's an emotion. Exactly. So I, if I summarize value and relationship and whatever you do in this life, two organs. Your heart, emotional intelligence, your brain is more about rational decisions. And you need to combine both of them as simple as that in order to drive value in the organization. You cannot say just, I need all numbers, because at the end, who bring numbers? People behind those numbers. So you need to focus on people. You need to focus on some rational numbers. Combine both of them based on your culture and the organization, drive change. Okay, I read articles, I read, I mean, it's going back or forward, let me see. I have seen my whole presentation now. Can I go back? Okay, oh, oh this one. Yeah. I try to summarize what is leadership means in three main elements. Leadership, first part is the ability to influence. If you are able to influence others, that's one part. Another part, which is more difficult, is the capacity to build new leaders. The third part is your resilience and flexibility in managing stress. Most people fail when it comes to stress, they give up. Three main parts summarize leadership skills if you really would like to derive value. Now, I always state this, Leaders doesn't mean you need to have an authority. If you want, you are a leader, doesn't mean you have to be a director or a manager or whatever supervisor level. You can lead yourself. Leadership skills is very important because anyone in this life needs that skill to communicate with anyone in life. Whether your mom, dad, family, kids, people, friends, organization, your manager, line managers, even yourself. In one of uh, his book, uh, John Maxwell was saying, you don't need to be in a position of authority to become a leader. Lead yourself. That also requires skills. Communicate with yourself. That's communication skills. So leadership is not about authority. Three parts is there. How you manage stress, how you create another leader, and how you influence others. Can we go back? Okay. It's amazing. Three statements. Uh, I am humbly. I can add one word here. Leadership to influence others positively. Second sentence. But the last one. Why do you only focus on the stress? Why we don't change it like challenge? For example, I'm a team member. We have activity. We are not equal, right? Uh, maybe if I can better than me, he is leading me in a way that I can challenge my time management, for example. I have lack of communication as I, I cannot reach out to somebody. I want to say something, but what I say looks like it's not selling the message. So I believe leaders actually are using others, not only for the stress. Stress, yes, this is my humble idea is to add it as to manage challenges. This is one of the challenges we have. Add managers, add regime, add system, and other normal stress, maybe inside, maybe outside. I knew some people of my team, they couldn't deliver because he has a problem at his team. So when it comes to home, he cut, he cut out everything. He became the top achiever. So it's not only about, yeah, it, it causes stress, I believe. But again, challenge, or the leader goes beyond the work parameter. It's exploring, uh, the aura of the person himself. As you said, we are human. We have business part, family part, human part, even some fun part. This is I think your, your point is absolutely right, especially in the first point when you're saying positive, you're talking about the positive change. Exactly. I mean, we can, we can use the examples of people who are leaders, but they, their impact was negative. But we are talking about leaders who's driving a positive impact in the world. Second part, I agree with you also, but the differentiation here, what comes is challenge, Sometimes it's an easy challenge, always for us. I can manage it, I can lead it, others can't manage it, manage it. But the consequences of the challenge, one of them which I think most of the problems of people nowadays with overwork, with the load of work, with the, with the competition, what's going on in the world, is the stress. So the reason I'm focusing on stress because I wanted to give the, that sense of responsibility on the leader is beyond only a challenge. Because the challenge can be a physical challenge, but as you mentioned, if he has a problem in his life that's, that's affecting his performance, your sense of responsibility goes to solve his personal problem, which creating maybe stress, uncertainty, and st uh, stability, which affecting the performance. I do agree, but the stress is one of the I think problems based on my readings is 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 really um, you know. Um, is the outcome result exactly? The challenge will create a stress. exactly. Yeah, I, I, Exactly. Even the tension, even we go by physics. If you apply a force at any metal, it creates stress, right? Exactly. The tension. Yeah, 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 yeah. A yeah, yeah. um, couple of years before, in one of the 
eat gathering. I said, let's have this gathering productive. You know, always when we gather, most of the times gossiping and, you know, talking about something is not valuable. I said, let's make it productive. My cousins were there. I said, okay, who's volunteering for this question? My objective was to drive a purpose so they know what is the purpose in life. Three of them volunteered. I said, okay, let me ask you a question. What's your purpose in life? They couldn't answer, by the way. But anyway, I said, okay, what's your goal in life? One of them said, I want to be rich. Another one said, I want to be famous. The third one said, I want to have a power. Okay, I said, let's go to the person who said, I want to be rich. Why you want to be rich? I just want to have more money. Then I said, why you want more money? So why are you asking why, why, why to me? I said, there is a reason behind it. Why you want more money? Then he was thinking about it. Mm, I want to buy anything I want. Why you want to buy anything you want? Then he stopped. I tried to help him. He said, because I want to give a good life for my family where in their life they couldn't have everything. I said, fine. That's a good meaningful purpose where I mention here. I can give an example of you again. But I told him, how much money you want? He said, 10 million. I said, why 10 million? Why not 1 billion? Why not 1 trillion? Why not 100,000? What drives you that you need 10 million? So no answer, which means your goal is not to become rich. Let's rephrase it, financial stability. That might be a good goal, I think most of us will think about, I need to be financially stable. But financially stable for each of us is different. So that goal is good to have. So I drive, I, I, I draw for him a plan, which I think after 35 years old, I got this to myself about having a meaningful purpose. Anyone, within, whether he is a professional person in life, I think he need to have these five elements if he really would like to push himself to bring value to his life, or his professional life. Spiritual health, physical health, financial stability, mental health, social health. Let me talk about the mental health. There's a good phrase I read uh, before coming here. Mental health is about how you are feeding your brain, basically. Um, if you don't read book, you will sooner become a book where people who's reading book will read your book, which means you need to read. You need to feed your brain with the knowledge you cannot just say, I am a leader, I'm top of my organization, that's it. You need to improve yourself as you are forcing your subordinates to improve themselves. Ah, for 15 minutes, that's good at least. Yes. Great slide. Uh, I worked for corporate culture for 17 years, you know, yeah. so 12 years with American and 5 years with Japanese company, mostly led by European. You got some this very interesting keywords here, spiritual health, goals, mental health. When I see all my senior leaders, you know, this called insights. We do have the leadership style like red, blue, yellow, green. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So red people are very result driven. Be bright, yeah. be brief, be gone. I need results. I need money. Hit your financial sales. Most of the leaders who was like senior leaders were like that. Right. I don't. So in the corporate culture, that's for me, at least the people I work with, they have the leadership style. So when you see those people being successful and going up in the leadership positions, you want to be like them, right? Now there's a huge drive of emotional intelligence, you know, you have, especially in procurement world, the procurement people are driving and rightly so. So my question is following, how you find that balance of all those interesting keywords here and you work with the leaders in the corporate culture who are very result driven red people, how we do Good that? Good questions, I'll, I'll, I'll just, talk about it in three different elements. One, I have been assessed by this, this color, you know, uh, coding assessment. The result was the dominant color for me, color is red, then blue, then green. I don't know how many knows about these colors. Red means as a result oriented, uh, blue means very structure, structured mindset about numbers, analytics. Green means more people oriented. And yellow means last color is more a person like to shine. You know, outcome, I like to shine and these kind of things. I was surprised, to be honest, with this assessment. I see myself, I have that people connection with people. By why the color is the third dominant color, not the second and first. I discussed with some of my colleagues, and I think one of them had mentioned it very correctly. He said, your green is high for the outsiders. Your green is not high for the insiders. So you do care more about people who's outside of your zone. So you need to have that balance. Now, again, to second question, we would like to be like them. And your part was about balancing. Now, to be very honest and realistic, I don't believe there is daily balance between your personal life and social life. Very hard to, to, be, to be honest to, to maintain this. And one of the book I read for John Maxwell, which I think more realistic is, you cannot have that daily balance, but make it situational. For example, 
This week, you are working for 12 hours. You don't have time for your family. But make sure next week you give time for your family. So it's more about situations. You have projects, you are working, you finish the project, give time to your family. So it's not about daily balancing that I have to maintain, but it's more about situations, how to manage, because life is not easy anyway. The third question I think you said about, we want to be like them. In my last slide, I'll talk about, this is something I'll leave it to you about, what is success means? We always want to be like someone, you know? Why? I think let's keep that question for the last slide. We'll discuss about what is success means. Very good question. Sir. So three, ma five main pillars. I think this is important for you to set the goals. And this is main goals. Every goal you need to set up a small goals. Think big, but whenever you act, act small. One of the example when uh, Dr. Arafat said about sustainability, one of the initiative as a change I'm driving in the organization, it just take a cup to drive this initiative of sustainability. So we're just trying to bring, you know, removing the one-time use of plastic with the recycled cup. Just a cup. You, because change is not one-time change. It's a gradual change because you are affecting the process and people and culture and supply. You know, I, I, I think one of the slides, I'll have it here. What's the framework you need to focus on? Another example I promise you to, to give about UAE when it comes to these five uh, pillars. Let's ask, ask ourselves, Today, what it takes a leader of this country, whether they cross 50, 70 or 60 or 80 years old, committing, ensuring every week he meets with all leaders of the organization, the governments, and make decisions. Just think someone over 70 and 80 should think about retirement, right? Should think about, I'm finished, I'm done. I did everything. I need to delegate, let someone take this responsibility. Why till now, every week he's taking decisions? Is it because of the brand? I think we don't need to talk about Dubai and the brand that it's created. Is it because of money? I don't want to highlight about the money. There is a meaningful purpose, and who are close to our leaders will know that they are trying to build a good life for people. That drives everything. We do mistakes, we live from mistakes, because we have a meaningful purpose to drive us. Goldman leadership is still, uh, uh, styles, there are six, but I'm focusing on five. It's very important for us as a leader, especially with this changing go going on in the life, we become transformational or situation leadership. You cannot just apply one style as a leadership in, in, in every situation. You have to be flexible. So commanding, visionary, affiliative, democratic, coaching and every style i give an example and when to use and what is the impact i'll give an example of commanding basically do what i tell you to do red high red just do it do we need it this style yes sometimes we need it in crisis courses because in crisis courses you cannot use democratic style where you ask them all of them come please buy in let's share your ideas no you need to be very red oriented style. The impact is red. Uh, the impact is negative. Do we need it? Sometimes, yes. Same thing. You need to have a good leadership style when it comes to visionary. When we use this vision, when you have a vision, we're trying to tell people, come with me. And we have good leaderships here, leaders who have visions 10, 20, and 30 years. When you have a vision, and, and the impact is positive, affiliated. People come first. Empathy. Somebody is going through a problem. You cannot just go and commanding a style. You have to show empathy. When we use this, when trying to heal someone. And the impact is positive. Democratic is when you're trying to get the buy-in from everyone. Coaching, when you're sharing and try new things. When you use this to improve, that's why they always say this, the more you share with others, the more you learn also. This is a framework for any transforming any organization, I think. People, process, technology, organization, culture, and supply relationship. If you see one with the, the common aspect among all these five people that's why i had it in red if you want to take care of the organization take care of your people and i'm not saying take care of people always people think okay you're saying take care of people but we have kpis we have so many things think about these numbers who's bringing these numbers not machines at the end there is a human factor so you need to sit and understand how to drive people to bring value to your organization this is a great exercise about creating a good culture now, with this, I just want to focus on these two colors. I'll ask you a question. Which circle do you think is bigger than the other space? Let's see the others, what they say. Let's see if people are really focused and structured and blue or red. I just said blue because too many red. Yeah, be different, right? I just influenced. Anyway, I think your answer was right. My answer? Yeah. Oh. 
yeah, they're equal. Behind, it doesn't mean that uh, the red one is bigger. Yeah, just. Agree, but what is the learning point here? What just one. This is more about culture. Very important for leaders to understand this. It was equal with my style, with my way of presenting. I push you guys to answer a wrong answer, you know, and everyone believed it, correct? So what I'm saying is, if you are building a culture, if you can go back to the presentation, someone please. Yeah, building organization and culture is very difficult. So with that exercise, if something is going wrong and we keep quiet and people will share this, so with wrong concept, with with wrong philosophy, with wrong thinking, it become a culture. When it become a culture, the organization falls. Same thing applies within your family as well. So make sure that I always say this, if you have a point, don't make a noise, communicate your voice. So always try to communicate your voice rather than making just a noise because as I said, we are all human, we do mistakes. Sometimes leaders don't know that they are doing mistakes unless someone speak to them. I had summarize the value of procurement in one slide. I'll just, I will not go through it in details because of the time limitation. If tomorrow your boss or anyone is asking you what's the value of procurement, you can present this. I don't know who had done this exercise with me before. Okay, just think about your phone without looking at your brand. Do you think your phone is expensive? Yeah. Without, it's not Apple, it's not Samsung. Just think your phone is expensive. You can scan and answer. Just think about the phone. Is it expensive or not? The first answer comes in your brain. Can I borrow five minutes more? Mark? Okay, no. yeah, okay, thank you very much. Very interesting. We are all looking forward to the answers. <laughs> Good. Now, most of us, because maybe we have much money, we said no. Some of us said yes. Okay, let's go back. So most of us said, no, it's not expensive. But it's equal, I think, seven, eight. Okay. Think about the phone and think about all the equipments we used to buy and hold and manage before the phone is being created. Think about the fax machine. Think about the landline. Think about the calendar, the manual calendar. Think about the recorder. Think about the camera that we had. Think about the radio. Think about the alarm. Think about the notebook and the cassette. Think about before we used to buy this as individual items. Think about the cost of the processing and buying uh, cost. Think about the storage cost. Think about recycling cost. Thinking about all this cost, do you think the phone is expensive? I guess the answer will be no because most of you had answered it's no. Why I'm doing this? This gives us as a procurement professional, don't think about the current cost only. The total cost of ownership is very important. So tomorrow when you are selecting or leading any changes in the organization, it's not only cost, it's more than the cost. One of the comparison, I have run this in many webinars and most of them, I was able to change their mindset, you know, when saying yes or no. At the end, they're saying, no, the phone is not expensive, except in one country. It was in Malaysia. It was surprising me, but I understood after, you know, sitting with some of their leaders, very cost-oriented culture. So they are just focusing on what is, is the cheapest, cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. They, they just go cheap, 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 cheap. So anyway, it depends on the culture. Now, in this culture, if you're coming and bringing that, I need to bring value when it comes to other aspects, you might face challenges. Here is your leadership styles. How to lead change in the organization where they resist change. Three top KPIs. Sustainability, I think Dr. Arafat had mentioned, is very important. Customer service and cost. Uh, cost, I think, is very, very clear for everyone, but not direct cost. You have to think about the total cost of ownership whenever you are going through a uh, buying or selecting process. But customer service is a very interesting subject. I think for us, when, when, when we're driving change as a procurement professional, we always focus on procurement as a procurement only. You need to go beyond procurement and understand the journey from the customer. For example, one of the initiatives I have, I have drive about, cust about smart car. We were thinking about, okay, how to eliminate the procurement process. I think with the leadership, with the management, we said it's not about procurement process. It's about the journey of the customer. Go and check from the day one, how the customer, internal or external, interacting with us till end of the process, how to optimize this. So you always need to think about the total process of ownership not only procurement process. Yes, you can start with procurement process, but your vision should be big. Five mispressions. Just, just cost, It's so important. Unfortunately, we've never seen in procurement. Yeah. They say it's not our, our job or our role. Unfortunately, return on investment is one of our role. We want to know when I want to spend one dirham, 
what's my return on it? It doesn't matter, I impose it, and, and uh, sorry guys, impose it means in a nice way, with all my stakeholder in all my previous organization. I don't accept any business case without my return investment. Even for the billboard that we put on the bridges, we ask what's my return today? Yeah. If I wanna for, if I wanna put any post for credit card, how many people they will open account with Emirates MBD? So I have to put that in place. Unfortunately, 99.9% .9 of procurement, they don't do return on investment. They don't even focus on it. Thank you, Dr. Arafat. I think you brought a very important topic. From my perspective, I always say this to people, 80% is, is your mindset, 20% is your strategy. And if you see in the procurement, you always think about saving cost. If you think about saving cost and rebrand that saving cost to contribution and revenue, isn't it? It's not saving cost. I am contributing in the increase of the revenue of the organization by the same percent, I'm saving cost. So it's profit and sell. Exactly. That's why... I believe you are increasing the net profit directly 100% of what you are saving in the procurement. So $100 savings is a 100 net profit. Indeed. $100 extra sales means 20% net profit. So the procurement is the back door yeah. for organization maximization. So I, I agree with, with, with both of you, actually. It's okay, I'm, I'm loud enough. Yeah. So we are talking here. When we talk about cost, I believe everybody here knows the, the story be, uh, behind price, cost, and the value. So the yeah. value is the most uh, objective goal for the procurement. Uh, if you think that I have money I need to spend, it's... Yeah, I'm um, um, ordinary, normal, uh, you know, C-class uh, uh, procurement guy. If I have a money and a budget I need to invest, this is a second level. If I have a budget and I need to go beyond the investment for sustainable uh, achievement of what I do in the procurement, that's good. For, I'll give an example. For IT procurement, maybe we need some laptops, small items, a very, uh, very standard, low-cost, high-value item for some people. But if you stop a little bit, what, why we need this? Is it for new consultants or for my employees? For example, if it's for new consultant, why should I buy? Let me go for another objective. Let me go for something else. Let me buy, let me, let me what I can say. Let me go as a lease. Because I'm, I'm not only saving the cost of, of the, 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 the new item or the uh, fixed asset, uh, the maintenance, I'm avoiding the, the, uh, even the position and capitalization and then writing of all these processes. It has a cost. Current cost, nobody understands it, but I can have this value when I think right. It's not like I'm spending wisely. No, I'm investing wisely for the long term. And as you said, customer service or the customer journey Yes, that will lead to, uh, what I can say, a shooting star yeah. uh, procurement. Uh, that's why I always emphasize, thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. uh, I always emphasize that as a procurement leaders, it's become a must that you need to know a bit of everything. You cannot just say, I'm a procurement, I need to be very expert in procurement. No, you need to know about finance. Speak the language. You need to know about marketing because you need to you need to understand about finance because you can speak about revenue and profit. You need to understand about the strategy because you need to show them your vision and mission and your your, your uh, five years and six years. So you as a leader, you need to know a bit of everything in order to become a different, I would say, a different leader within procurement. In addition to that, I think this is not the topic we're discussing here. I think maybe in the panel discussion we will we'll highlight this. I truly believe now procurement as a world is an outdated. We used to call be called purchasing than procurement. I think COVID-19 has shown that we are more than price and cost. It's more about value. We'll be discussing this and, and I think in the panel discussion, if we have time, Mark. Five misperceptions about leadership. I'll go very fast about this. Most of people think businessmen, they are good leaders. Businessmen, they can bring money and everything, but not all of them are good in leading people. The management, the difference between leaders and management, management, you know that they are focusing on process and system, leader about leading people. The knowledge, we think qualification and, 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 and the certification makes you a better leader, no. You know, I think, I don't know, in Arabic they say half of, you did not understand the topic, but you understand and, and uh, memorizing the, the document itself. So it's about understanding the topic itself. The entrepreneurship, simply being popular doesn't mean you're a good leader. And I think we can see in the social medias, you know, sometimes they say, don't make stupid people famous. The position, this is very important. I think I have, have highlighted that in the beginning. To become a good leader, you don't need to have an authority. Yes, with the authority become easier, but no, doesn't mean if you have an authority, you are a good leader. This picture, an interactive question, I need an answer from you. Where do you think leader position is in this picture? Is it in the top or back and the right or left? 
or in the center? Everywhere. Okay, one answer. Center. center. Okay. In the front. I think the right answer is, just to save time, everywhere, based on the situation. Sometimes you need to be in the front, sometimes you need to back to support, sometimes you need to be in the side, just to make sure that things are working, because the system is working. Sometimes, unfortunately, because of your interference, the system goes down. So sometimes the system is working, just shadowing them and making sure everything is fine. Very interesting topic, home versus house. If I ask a question, how many of you think building a house is expensive regardless if it is in your home country or in UAE? Just raise your hand. Building a house is expensive or cheap? House, it's blocks. Cheap. It's cheap. Very good. Cheap. Just, I give you my account number, please, Dr. Arafat, and transfer some money there. <laughs> no, cheap from mine, again. Okay, okay, fine. So you have to take from personal perspective because nothing like home when you are building your home, it's where you want to stay, it's your rest, it's your peace. So this is the difference why I said it's cheap. Cheap, whatever you put money on it, to be the best for you, it doesn't matter how you do it. So what, what makes you feel good now? So building a house, do you think is expensive? And now I know you, you already got because you're close to me, so you know everything. <laughs> anyway, so leave this. Do you think building a house is expensive? I don't actually not answer. It's expensive. It's, it's one of the biggest investments you do in life. Exactly. Marriage and, and house, right? It depends who you marry, right? Uh, uh, yeah. That, that's another topic, Mudat. I mean, it will take three, four hours. So building a house is expensive. Now let's come to the building a home. One part of it is the block, the house itself. Another part of the family, the members is there. Neighborhood, feelings and emotions, the values that in the, in the, in the family itself, and the resources, you know, money, uh, whatever. Now, if I ask all of you guys, do you want to build a house or home? Why? If building a home is more expensive, if building a home is more headache, if building a home is, is not easy, building a house is cheaper. Why am building a home? Exactly. So you have a purpose to drive. That's the most important part. Without having a purpose, by the way, I mean, a purpose is not something you, you just wake up in the morning, oh, I got my purpose in life. It took 35 years for me to understand my purpose. But, but you can't drive change without purpose, by the way, with the goal initiatives. But having a purpose, you will become a different person. So with this example, you can think that even it's expensive, even it's hard, even it's, it's, there is a headache, but still I want to build that home because there are purpose. I want that inner feelings and satisfactions comes to me. I'll just go fast. Nine key future skills as a leader you need to focus on. Technical business and behavior. Technical how good you are in your technical skills. Business, I can combine emotional and social intelligence there. Behavior, your leadership and communication skills. Ten common mistakes in procurement. The first one, always people make me laugh or they laugh. It is in a professional context. Falling in love with single partner. In a professional context. Don't tell me that this supplier, I cannot go away from him. He's the one. You need to go away from this perspective. But it's a professional perspective, guys. But other things, I mean, it's very straightforward. Believing that anyone can do procurement. Thinking buying is always the solution. You know, sometimes avoid buying is a value. Failing to devote enough time to testing process at uh, POC. I think who is buying technology will understand this. We underestimate the POC process, which is very important. Not engaging all stakeholders. I think Dr. Afad talked about the importance of stakeholders. Wasting time in transactional projects, failing to monitor supply performance, ignoring sustainability and security impact. I think one of the example people always telling me, okay, with this digital transformation, Suleyman, there is a lot of uh, cybersecurity threats. Why we need digital transformation? Why we need technology? Let's go to the, you know, paper-based process. Then I said, how you are going to minimize the fraud processes then? Everywhere there is a risk but don't underestimate the value. That's why you need leaders to lead change. Using the wrong matrix and measuring value, treating procurement simple task replication. Last slide, Mark. Now, this is very interesting. A Couple of days before somebody was discussing with me, told me that that lady in the organization, she is very successful. I like discussion, by the way, with people. I said, okay, what's your definition about success? If somebody is successful in his professional life, but not successful in his personal life, is he successful? No, I mean, no. Let's, let's think about it. If somebody is successful in his personal life, but not successful in his professional life, is he successful? If somebody brought his kids in a good way, is he successful? If somebody have that inner peace and relaxing, is he successful? Somebody have 10 million or 20 million or have a big companies, Apple or whoever, are they successful? Somebody drive values in the organization, is they successful? And you know, they always say that a couple of famous leaders, you know, Hitler, one of them, uh, Gandhi, I think, and in India, for example. So there are examples of leadership. Which one, which one is successful in his life? The reason I'm saying this, because success is very, from my perspective, perception of people, one. And I'll give you an example to simplify uh, the understanding of what I mean by success. 
If I tell you someone finish a race in one and in one hour and thirty minutes, someone else finish the race in one hour, which one is better or successful? Oh, the one finished in one hour. If the person who finished in one hour, his age is seventy, and the one who finished in one and a half an hour, his age is twenty. Obviously, you will say the one with twenty. And however, if we change the criteria, the one with the one hour, his age is seventy, and he's fat. So I have to say this. And the one, let's say, finish within 30 minutes, he's young, but his size and age is low. Which one you will value? The 70. Exactly. Yes. That's why I'm saying success is more perception. perception and it depends on the resources and circumstances and that's happening in the culture. That's why for me, success is to simplify as much as possible is where you used to stand before a couple of years and where you become. Now, if you are improving, you are a successful person from your perspective. If you are a better version from a couple of years till today, you are going moving ahead in the right path. That's the smallest and simplest definition of success because it's very subjective. Today, most of people say he has a lot of money, he's successful. Okay, money is the definition of success. Having good relationship is definition of success good values definition of success having good position is definition of success in your professional life or personal life thank you very much from experience how do you see a correlation between teaching and leadership and what do you think that how many leaders are good coaches okay good very good question i have three sisters in my family i'm the eldest one by the way so i have mom and five sisters and wife and three daughters I'm saying a family dominant with females, very old. That's why you know colors. Huh? That's why you know colors. Which color? I was confused. What are these colors when you ask about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. One of them, she is religious. She likes about religion. She takes advice from me about religion and Islam and everything. Another one, she's very helpful to people. She likes helping people. The third one is more professional. She likes to talk about the professional environment. So I think in, in, uh, in one day, Three of them called me and asking for your advice. So it's like, I think between each call, it's one hour and two hours. Then I told one of my sister, I think, you know what's the difficult thing is? As a leader, you need to understand and have a knowledge about each aspect of the problem. So as a human, as a leader, you also don't know everything. So when we talk about good coach or good leader, my personal perception is, it's all about how much knowledge you have about something and how to communicate this to others. So the key word here is communication. Are you able to communicating it in a way where the other party can receive it? This is the most difficult thing and this take us to another level where they always say is, if you seek an advice from someone, ensure that they have the three elements, who knows your problem very well, who knows you very well, and he has that sort of, some sort of wisdom, you know, when he's trying to advise you. So from my perspective, good coach, not good coach. For me, the most important part is how you are adding value to this gentleman. Now for me, the rank and successful criteria is not like 10 people came to me, I want to add value to all of them. Maybe I will be able to add value to five of them or six of them. I will fail in two and three. I will learn from it. I'll become a better version. I'll go to next level. So continuous learning, being a better version is very important, I think, because we are human at the end. We, know, we don't know everything. We learn from each other. That is one of the good formula I use it, you know, as a leader or anyone, each one teach one. You know, if every one of us can share and teach someone else, that person teach someone else, I think that's the main ultimate goal. Thank you. Most welcome. Thank you very much, Suleiman. Most welcome. It was amazing listening to you. Thank you, Omar. You are such a wise man. I mean, you, still, you still. could be uh, 60 already because uh, we can listen to you uh, for ages. Uh, really, really inspiring. Thank you very, Thank very, you much. very much. Mark. And we will have later another uh, chance to talk with him because we have a podium discussion. Man will also participate. Thank you very much. Thank you.